Hey, tiny people living inside my phone. You guys know I like Spider-Man. I kind of like this guy. I kind of have a deep, deep love of Spider-Man. And there's a project that I've been talking about that has to do with Spider-Man for months. I've been working on it for years and talking about it for months and nothing's come up. Nothing's come up. Finn, where's the Spider-Man project? You've been talking about it. You've made like five videos where you've said it's gonna come. Where is it? Well, today's the first part. It's sort of an announcement video, I guess. I'm announcing the lineup of the project. It's it's like my own little cinematic universe, but it's not a cinematic universe because it's just Spider-Man. It's just my Spider-Man movie lineup uh, with shows for lore. Um, so that's what we're talking about today. Um, to start, uh, there's 12 movies. I know, I got carried away and I'm sorry, okay? Don't be mad at me. Um, so, the first film, just labeled Spectacular Spider-Man, is the origin story. Because I like a good origin story. You don't need one. Um, and Spider-Man's origin is pretty well known. You don't really have to hash it out. So I'm not exactly saying take 50 minutes to show him get bit and Uncle Ben die, but having an origin story is helpful for a character that I'm expecting to do so much with. Um, the main parts that I want to talk about uh, is who's the main villain of this film going to be? Well, it's Adrian Toomes' Vulture. Um, and I have fan casts for all my villains. Um... The only problem with casting Peter and, and all of them is their children. And if I cast today, and then seven months from now, one of those kids stops acting, you see, or let's say I don't get to cast, I cast now, and then by the time I get to work on it, it's a thing of like, that person's 36 now, they don't look like a 15-year-old, you know what I mean? So I don't like I don't like to cast children. It feels wrong because you you don't really know if they're gonna continue acting and da 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 da. It feels weird. But uh, Brian Cranston is gonna be my Adrian Toomes. I think it's perfect. I'm going with the storyline of Vulture being a man who was diagnosed with cancer and then decides to go into this disturbing area, <laughs> this disturbing area of New York and deal with these terrible things to provide for his family. Um, background stuff going on. We are introduced to Peter's theater teacher, um, who, uh, if I say his name, sort of gives away who the bad guy is for movie two. Also, I'm sorry if this is really not put together, because it's not put together. Um, also Goblin. Uh, Goblin's here, it's Norman, and, uh, the Osbournes are black, fuck you, I don't care. They're, I like that. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Esposito. Why'd I say it like that? You know who Giancarlo is. He's my goblin. He deserves it. Look at the fucker. He should be goblin. Uh, but he gives Vulture a uh, serum that causes the whole wing thing to happen. Blah, 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 blah. Vulture happens. Blah, 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 blah. Vulture builds a fuckload of respect for uh, Peter Parker. Not Spider-Man. Just Peter Parker. Um... And they have a cute little interview thing, because Peter's kind of be a journalist and a photographer and whatnot. So they have a little moment. Um, and also, I want Vulture to start as, like, an old-school Vulture, where it's like, oh, it's just the wings, and that's, like, it. And then have him slowly become more decrepit. Uh, sort of go from the old-school green outfit towards that of, like, the more noir idea of the character. I think that's cool. Um, close to the end of the film, Peter beats the fuck out of Vulture. Off to the island you go. Not Epstein's. Riker's. Uh, second movie, starring Charlie Day as Quentin Beck. Because I think Charlie Day could pull off somebody who's charismatic, but also not egotistical. Or maybe the op... Somebody who is very full of themselves, but not in a cool way. No offense to Charlie Day. I love him. But uh, I love the idea of Mysterio being just Peter's fucking theater teacher. I love all the characters being connected. 
Um, he puts together this big play, and he's finally going to get his big break when it's broken up by Herman Schultz, the shocker, uh, who's played by Woody Harrelson. Yes, Woody Harrelson's my shocker, because I think slightly out of shape, really southern shocker is fun. Um, but, yeah, uh, Quentin puts together this big movie, and it's ruined, well, movie, theatrical debut thing, and it's ruined by shocker, and then he goes fucking insane, and he's like, I, I need to get back at shocker for this, I have to get back at shocker for this, I have to get back at shocker for this, I have to get back at shocker for this. And then he goes to the only crazy motherfucker in New York, only crazy motherfucker in New York, Norman Osborn, who doesn't give him crazy powers, uh, but gives him the technology needed to make his stage tricks more than tricks. Um, the first time we see Mysterio wreaking havoc, he just absolutely beats the fuck out of Spider-Man. I'm talking... Throws him through some shit, blows him the fuck up, destroys him. And he continues to do this, but he's sort of treating it like it's a show. He, he's he got cameras everywhere under his control using drones. He's recording everything as a show because he's a showman. It's what he does. And that continues, that continues, that continues. Then him and Shocker get into it. And Shocker... Also gets his ass kicked a little. Um, so it continues, and then Shocker and Spider Man come to an agreement. I will help you get rid of that fucker because he's doing a lot of damage. Is Peter's idea? It's I'm gonna help you because I need that to not happen. And Shocker's idea is I need to help you because that thing will kill me, and I don't want to die because. Quentin Beck is fucking strong. His magic is insanity. Um, going forward, they get to their final little, like, two-on-one fight. That is, until Shocker turns on Peter, he'll turn to the century and knocks him the fuck out. Knocks him out. Knocks him down where he's, like, on the ground for a while with one of his big-ass gauntlets. Then him and Quentin fight for a while. Peter helps. Quentin's big bull head gets crashed in and then... Shocker mounts him, and Peter shoots a web to stop him, but he blow. He just uses those big fucking gauntlets to blow Mysterio's fucking head open. Because, yeah, Shocker is not a good guy in this. He's a pretty fucking bad one. He just blows him up. Shocker and Peter both know who each other are. Herman Schultz and Peter Parker, they know of each other. Uh, but Peter tells the cops this. But, uh, I should have brought this up. Gwen Stacy's a thing. Her dad's the captain. You know, you get it. You know, if you're watching this, you know what's... You know Spider-Man. Uh, Stacy, Cap, Captain Stacy, not a fan of Spider-Man. Uh, after this, what happens is, we, we, uh, Shocker runs off, Peter runs off, and then, third movie, the Goblin movie, who's been building up in the background. I haven't been going in depth. This is my, like, elevator pitch for a bunch of shit. It's not like I'm pitching a movie. I'm picking a fucking, like, 20 years worth of shit. Uh, so, movie, movie tres. Also, spe it's just Spectacular 1, Spectacular 2, Spectacular 3. They'll start having more stuff next, I promise. They're not all just, it's not gonna be Spectacular 10, I promise. Um... But movie three, the Goblins movie, who's been building up slowly in the background. Um, Sean Carlo is really fucking good at playing those characters where it's like, I'm very good, very positive, I care about you. Deadpan, I will murder your whole fucking family. Like, he's really good at that, and I think that's that's how I like my Norman Osborn. Um, so he builds slowly, and the serum he's been building up is to make monies. He's trying to become the most monies ever. Um, that's, that's a really shitty version of me explaining it. I don't have to tell you shit. Um, long story short, he we get tiny little shithead goblin wearing like the fucking like purple cloak and shit on the glider, running into to Midtown High, fucking shit up, blowing shit up. He's after Spider Man. He's after Spider Man. Um, 
Damn, where's my brain at? There it is. Uh, he's at the Spider-Man. He does not know Peter is Spider-Man. There's a scene earlier in the movie. I don't want to go super in-depth because I'm saving it for the actual video. Shocker is running from New York. and Peter stops him. And Herman very simply just goes to a, goes to Peter and gives him the fucking Shocker gauntlets and says, Listen, kid. Mysterio was scary, but manageable. This new thing, I can't handle, you can't handle, New York can't handle, I'm gone. And then he runs the fuck away. Uh, Peter doesn't know what that means, but then the next day, his school's attacked. Goblin coming after Spider-Man, who there's pictures of, uh, like, on the top of the roof, which makes Goblin think... Maybe one of these teachers is Spider-Man. That would explain why he gets to the school so quickly. He doesn't think it's a kid. Um, moving forward, Goblin slowly mutates. Um, his skin gets a little bit, like, nasty towards green, but not exactly. Uh, but no, like, crazy stuff yet. Um, then, Peter sneaks into the school, takes one of the Goblin bombs that didn't explode, and he takes it to Harry and Gwen, who are hanging out in the giant Osborne Tower. Um, they both know he's Spider-Man at this point, but they're the only people... Them and Herman are the only motherfuckers on the planet that know at this point. Um, so, we're going, we're going, we're going, and Osborne walks in, old boy Normie, he comes in, and he's like, Oi, mate, where'd you get that fucking thing from, bruv? He's not Australian, I'm just doing accents to change it from my normal voice. Oi, bruv, where'd you get that fucking thing? Or, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Norman. We got it from the fucking school, bruv. In it and all that. All right, bruv. Give it here, mate. I'll tell you where it's from. And he picks it up, and he he kind of, like, takes it to himself, because they don't see it. It says Oscorp on it. I don't know why the fuck it says that. Really stupid idea to put on a bomb, but it's on there. He takes it, and he leaves, and he as he leaves, he kind of looks back and notices that there's, like, scars on Peter's arm. He beat the fuck out of Spider-Man. He... Where'd you get them scars from, Peter? But he doesn't say it. Oi, bruv. You got them fucking scars or something in it. Later on, we see a scene of... Harry going to visit his father, who was in his office. And he goes in there. And his dad's, like, sat hardly awake. And Harry's like, hey, dad. You do okay, man? You haven't been acting normal recently. Normal Norman! Norman. Uh, I'm stupid. But, uh, I'm sorry. I've been recording for like three hours. I'm trying to backlog stuff because I keep forgetting to record. I apologize. I'm bugging. He slowly puts together that this crazy goblin fucker is his daddy. And he tries to defuse the situation without explaining to his dad that he knows. And he leaves... He goes, and he finds Peter and Gwen, who are having dinner with Aunt May. Uh, yeah. So, oh, my little ass. That hurt it, my little boosy. What the freak, dude, my little asshole. Going forward, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna scream. I'm sorry. <laughs> he goes, and he tells him, Oi, bruv, my daddy's the goblin or something in it. I found these bombs in his room in that gliding thingy, my bubba. That big thingy he stood on, mate. It's in there. It's in his office, bruv. And they're like, er, my god, no worse than his earthers. And then they talk about it, and he's like, Peeber, what are we gonna do? I don't know her. What are we gonna do? I'm tweaking. I'm high. I'm definitely on crack right now. Uh, they decide that they probably shouldn't. They decide not to go to the cops. Because Norman is mayor at this point. In movie two, he becomes mayor. Uh, so the cops aren't exactly going to believe some random teenagers, much less his angsty kid. Um, uh, fucking Christ, my little beans. I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm 15 minutes into this. I'm only three movies in. I've got, I've got eight more. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Goblin then knows who Peter is, Peter knows who Goblin is, and they fight at Oscorp Tower, because the guys are having dinner with May, 
and the goblin breaks in. And it's a big, beefy, ultimate style goblin. Huge, giant muscles, horns, red eye, scary Hulk looking bastard. Big motherfucker. And he comes in and he grabs Harry by the neck and he grabs Gwen by the neck and he gets on his glider and he goes to Oscorp Tower. And Peter's like, holy fuck. And then he throws, like, throws the suit on and May's like, what the, what the you have Spider-Man? And he's like, I'll explain later. I, got, I love you. I gotta, I gotta go. And he goes and they get to Oscorp Tower and fucking he goes up to the top. And Osborne's like, I'll fucking kill you, Spider-Man. Because he's gone crazy. He's like, Spider-Man. Have you heard of society, Spider-Man? Or something. I don't know. Uh, and then he, he's he got Gwim. And he's got, he's got Harry. He's like, fucking get him. And he drops them both. And Peter saves them both. And puts them on the walls so that they will not fall to their death. Um. Uh, he then starts getting into a fight with Goblin, who's way fucking stronger than him, and kicks the fuck out of him, destroying his suit, cracking his ribs, maybe break his arm or something, just fuck Peter up. And then he's got him down, he's fucking like, bah, 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 beating the fuck out of him. Like, full on, like, full mount, like, forearm strike, big motherfucker beating the fuck out of Peter. Because I said so. Then, uh, Peter is being, getting the shit beat out of him, and Goblin's, like, digging his claws into him and shit, like, slamming his head into the concrete. And he forces him to look up, and he's like, watch this. And then he, he drops Gwen and Harry again, and Peter has to jump and get him. He dives for Harry first because Harry's lower. He grabs him, flips him to a wall, leaps up, goes for Gwen. And then we get the scene of the shooty shooty foomp foomp. And it flies down, and the web hits Gwen. Peter flips down, gets her, turns, and tries to shoot his web up. And as he shoots his web up, he doesn't get it, and he slams straight into the fucking concrete. He takes the brunt of the fall, and he's like, oh my god, that fucking hurts. But think, fuck, Gwen's okay. Uh, Gwen's head still fucking whip. She's gone. And he goes into a fit of rage. He doesn't tear up pure anger. Well, he has tears in his eyes, but, like, he's not hes not ugly crying yet. Pure angry, he just fucking goes for Goblin. Like, double legs him, punches the fuck out of him, rip his fucking horn off, like, bloody that motherfucker up. And then he leaps off with Goblin, and he's just fucking bludgeoning them downward as they fall from the top of this building. Goblin slams... And, he's, and then Peter sort of, like, slowly gets up, falls to his knees by Gwen, and then there's that sad moment. As Captain Stacy comes in, he does not see Peter's identity as Peter quickly throws his mask on. It's ripped up, but it covers what needs to be covered. And the only thing Captain Stacy can see is Norman Osborn, because he's reverted back to his normal state, on the ground, bloody as shit. Harry Osborn, looking distraught. His own daughter, no longer alive, and Spider-Man standing. And his first thought is, fuck you, Spider-Man. I fucking hate Spider-Man. Fuck Spider-Man. I hate Spider-Man. And from now on, he hates fucking Spider-Man. Um, the ending scene of the movie is sort of like a, a little nod to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. How for, all three of them are just funeral gimmicks. Um, but... We get that, and it's really somber, and we see Peter at a low point. He's not happy, he's not making jokes, he's still Spider-Man, but he's not... He's Spider-Man, but he's not Spider-Man, you know what I mean? After this, we get the first series, we get the Black Cat, like, I don't know, maybe three episodes or something, just to... Have her have backstory. It doesn't come out straight after the third movie. It comes out later. Uh, but just to say that that exists for her lore. Movie four happens. And her Aunt May and Peter work together to make a better suit. Because it keeps getting destroyed. And they make he makes this idea. What if it has white accents? And it has white accents. Uh, and then when he finally puts it on. It has white and black accents. And... 
He's like, oh, I guess that's an Aunt May touch. Kind of cute. I'll keep it. But he's not... He's not talking like that. He's still incredibly unhappy. He's very angry at the world. He's very sad. He doesn't know how to handle it because a man who he has treated as a father and who has been there for him and is not only someone who's close to him, but also his best friend's dad has caused the loss of the person he's cared about the most. It's like a very hard to handle thing. And we have him going around. Going around. And this movie, this fourth movie, is Spider-Man's Last Hunt. And it's a Craven movie. Who's Craven? It's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan should be Craven. I think that's I think that's a good idea. I think Jeffrey Dean Morgan should be Craven. Craven comes to New York looking for his perfect hunt. He he want he's bested all of the creatures that exist. And now he's going to go for these different people. We get little show-ups from, from characters of, of the comics, such as Vermin, who Craven brutally takes out. We have um, Grizzly shows up, taken out. Craven just takes down all of these characters from the comics, all these very animalistic characters. And then he meets with Spider-Man. He meets with Spider-Man. It's a back-and-forth gimmick. It's a back-and-forth gimmick. But he uses his tactics to overcome Peter. Poops on the ground. He's dead. Well, he's not dead, but you get it. He beats the fuck out of Peter. Until Peter gets this little fit of rage when he's, like, on the ground, about to just, like, be finished. He gets this, like, fit of anger because Craven brings up that the reason he's here is because he saw Spider-Man take out the goblin, this giant abomination of a creature. Something that rivals even himself. You could take out, but you can't you can't take out me. Disappointing. God, my hair's bad. But we get that conversation and then he doesn't kill Peter. He cranks him. Peter wakes up. He's still got a suit on and he's very afraid. He's like, "Fuck." We then get introduced to Black Cat, who's pretty cool. I don't have to explain the whole movie. That's why this, this is already 20 minutes long. Um, there's two more interactions with Craven that we see with Peter. One where Craven has captured Aunt May. Uh, and then another where Peter is buried alive. Peter is buried at Gwen Stacy's grave. Uh, and he's down there and he wakes up. And he, he's, he's got this, like, thing. He's like, where am I? And he starts to realize where he's at. I'm buried. And then he starts to realize where he's buried. Because Craven brings up, specifically, that night with Goblin. And the rage kicks in again. This deep, dark, disturbing area that Peter's in takes over completely. He starts punching at the roof. Punching at the roof of the coffin. And he breaks through it and he digs through the dirt and his hands fly out and it looks like it's shadowy it's dark and when he finally comes out of the dirt he stands and lightning strikes and the light shows his suit's black it's not the darkness the little black accents on the suit weren't Aunt May um, and then he chases Craven to the sewers and he beats the ever-loving fuck out of him. He's down. He's bloodied. He cannot fucking move. He's probably paralyzed. And right before he kills Craven, Black Cat's like, hey, no, don't do that. They, they have a lot more scenes. I just didn't bring it up. Uh, it's like, please don't kill him. That's bad. Spider-Man, don't do that. And then Peter stops. And they leave. And then on the rooftop... They're sat talking, and he talks about this anger and this loss and the sadness and what he's missing and what is gone for him, what is not there in who he is. And she retorts not only with support, but with being able to understand similar things. And then throughout the movie, there's been this idea where he's afraid to reveal his identity, and she is kind of pushy about it and wants him to because she wants to work with him. 
And at a certain point, she gives up on that idea. It's like, you've been through a lot. I don't want to push it on you. At this point, Peter's now a graduate. He's going into college. So, yeah, don't don't try to spend the whole, but that cat was a minor thing. No, he's an adult. Um, so, we get there. He's pretty cool, and they're talking. And while they're talking, he grabs his mask and pulls it down, puts his hand out for a handshake. Peter. That's all he says. She shakes his hand, pulls her tiny little cowl off, and says, Felicia, my stomach's growling. My apologies. Um, then we get our little credit scene, sort of. It's like a the last scene of the movie, I guess. It's not really a credit scene. And Craven is laying there, and there's police tape, and he's not alive. Peter didn't kill him. Something did, though, and he's laying there. And there's a giant gaping hole in his chest and, a, and little traces of, of poison. Scorpion time. Movie 5, baby. Spider-Man, the, the symbiote saga part 1. Scorpion movie. Who's Scorpion? It's Matt Geigen. Who's playing him? God, I'm really bad at names. Why am I so bad at names? Michael Mando. Because the MCU chose him to be Scorpion and they did nothing with him. So he's my Scorpion. And he's sort of built like a horror film. You know, I this movie's kind of built where he's just terrifying and in the background the whole time, and he kind of just sneaks into everything. Um, oftentimes, when he's on screen, you don't see him very much. He sneaks into stuff. He attacks without being seen. You don't see his face throughout the entire fucking film. That's how, like, in the darkness he is. Um, but he killed Craven, and now he's here, and he's attacking the spider. And then we get... Uh, a scene where he stabs Spider-Man with his poison, and Peter just kind of shrugs it off because of the symbiote and whatnot, which he kind of doesn't understand yet. Like, it's starting to take him over, but it's it's not. And it's not evil. The symbiote's not evil. It just isn't. Um, but it's taken over a little bit, uh, and then then who, Black Cat, who he is now romantically in, in a relationship with, gets stabbed with the same poison, and he freaks the fuck out. He's like, oh god, not again, another dead woman I care about, this is fucked. So he beats the fuck out of Scorpion, Scorpion runs away. Scorpion does not take that disrespect, he gets the fuck up out of there. And then, uh, there's like, not really a time skip, but like, a couple scenes that over a couple of days... Uh, have passed scenes with Harry, May, a couple things about college, specifically his run-in with Kurt Connors, his run-in with Otto Octavius, and a rehabilitation of uh, Norman Osborn, who is now not a businessman because he, you know, rattled the brain a bit, but he's no longer in, like, a custody thing. He... He is recovering, and he's taking care of himself, and Harry is taking care of him too. And it's very, very hard for Peter to be there for that, but he is. Uh, also, Norman doesn't remember the Goblin stuff. He doesn't remember Peter being spot. He doesn't remember any of that. Um, so we get a scene in the hospital where Peter is chilling out with with uh, Felicia, who was in the hospital in sort of a comatose state due to that. <laughs> uh, and Peter has a little dream. He has a little dream of Aunt May and Uncle Ben talking with him. And he's very young. And he's explaining all the stuff he's going through and how he can't handle it. And they're just telling him it's okay. It's okay, Pete. You're alright. And it continues, and it continues. And we don't get the great power, great responsibility line until now. This is when we get it. In this dream sequence, it's something that he's come up with himself. Because of Uncle Ben. Because of Aunt May. May is still alive. She's not gone. She's just in this dream state so that she can be with Ben on screen. And this is when we get that line. It's like both of them... Uh, May starts it, and then Ben ends it. 
uh, and then Peter wakes up to the alarms of the security thing and the hospital going off. Matt Gargan is going fucking stupid. And this is when we finally get to see what he looks like because Peter cracked his fucking mask open. Uh, and we get this whole interaction in the hospital of him, A, trying to attack Black Cat, B, trying to attack Peter, and C, attacking anyone else who gets close. Um, long story short, they get some shit beat into them. Pretty nasty. It's pretty bad. Like, it's it's honestly pretty fucked. And at this point, Peter has gotten rid of the symbiote with help of uh, Johnny Storm. Yay! Fantastic Four gimmick. Um, but yeah, he got the help in that. So Peter no longer has the symbiote suit uh, on. It is gone. It's not on him no more. And then Peter, without, he's been blaming the suit for his anger, blaming the suit for his sadness, blaming the suit for his brutality. But in this fight, he shows all of that anger, that sadness, that brutality, and he almost kills Scorpion. Almost. Same thing as he almost did with Craven, but without the symbiote. This was Peter Parker. This was Spider-Man. He can't blame anything. This was him. This is why that great power with great responsibility gimmick just now happened. Peter has to stop himself. And Captain Stacy is right the fuck there. And he sees Spider-Man about to kill Scorpion. And Spider-Man stops. And he drops to his knees and he starts crying. The mask is off. Stay, uh, Captain Stacy's behind him. And he has his, his gun drawn. And Peter's crying. And then Peter, without looking, just says, I'm sorry. Tears in his eyes. No movement. Still down. Gripping his hands. Gritting his teeth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he breaks down. He's sorry because of Gwen. He's sorry because of black cat he's sorry because of this he's sorry about what he just did to this fucking criminal he's sorry and George comes up to him with the gun and kind of goes from pointing it at him to pointing it down and he puts his hand on his shoulder as you can hear other people running up the stairs and stuff more cops George simply says I am too. And he fucking helps Peter go out the window and get the fuck out of there. And that happens. And he's gone. He's out of there. And then we get three more scenes before this movie ends. The first one's pretty simple. It's just him visiting uh, Felicia as she starts to wake up and her little thingies start jigging. It's him... Uh, as Spider-Man visiting Johnny Storm. Uh, and in that scene, we see the symbiote escape. They don't know it, but it did. Uh, and then the final scene is him finally getting a job with J. Jonah Jameson. Um, throughout movie four and five, there's like a back and forth between him and Jameson where he wants to work there, but he can't. And, da, 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 da. and he becomes friends to allies to... A hated person for Eddie Brock. Next movie, woohoo, Venom. 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 Venom's here. Woo! Venom. Yay, Venom. Uh, Venom. 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 Uh, Vim. Venom. I don't know who I want Venom to be because I want Eddie and Peter to be a similar age. Uh, because all the other villains are old com considered con co compared to Peter so I want Eddie to be like a similar age so I don't know who to cast as him so uh, Venom happens and he doesn't do too much he doesn't do too much evil he's he's still a good boy because the symbiote is not evil it just feeds on stuff so this movie's a lot cooler than I'm gonna explain it because I I've made a video about my venom about like my complaints with venom and stuff so like I have already talked about it a lot. Uh, Vim and Peter fight. Vim and Peter fight. 
Venom and Peter fight. Building, falling down, Venom and Peter both save people. Close to the end, uh, fucking, he yanks Eddie out, but the symbiote's still inside. Eddie runs in to get the symbiote. The building crashes down on him, and Peter's like, well, fuck. Venom is dead. Then, Vim, we get the post credit scene of, Vim, of Eddie's little hand wiggling in the debris as the symbiote coats him and he grows. Then, uh, we get a Venom little series uh, called Venom Lethal Protector, and I'm gonna say it gets to have 12 episodes because it's not a backstory, it's its own story and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, then, we get the Sensational Spider-Man, because I had to name it something. Uh, the Sensational Spider-Man is the seventh movie, uh, and it's about the, the lizard and, 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 and the Sandman. Um, I don't know who I want lizard to be yet. Um, I don't really know. I was thinking Tom Hanks, because I think he just looks like how I want. Kurt to look, but he's not the right actor, so I don't really, I, I, I don't know who I want Legend to be. John Cena's Sandman, period. John Cena is Sandman, sorry. He's Flint Marco Sandman, to be specific. Um, I'm not gonna go too into depth on the rest of these. I'm tired. It's five in the morning, and I've been doing this since, like, midnight. Um, but... Spider-Man has to fight both of them. The reason I stuck them together is I think it, I think it's cool to have the lizard in the sand. I just think that's fun. <laughs> also, they're both uh, caught in Peter Peter's web of life. Um, also, didn't bring this up. Felicia and Peter are married. That happened. Felicia and Peter are uh, married. Um, but yeah, that movie happens. And close to the end, they both get sent off to Wycos. Well, Sandman gets sent to Rikers, but he's sent to, like, a mental thing. Because he needs to become a good boy. Whereas Kurt is a good boy. He just can't control himself. Um, we also get the first introduction of Miles. Um, he shows up, and he figures out that Peter is Spider-Man. He is already bitten at this point. And he comes to him, and he's like, hey, um... Mr. Parker, I, um, I, I have a question. At this point, Peter is 24, maybe, and Miles is 15. Um, but he's like, hi, M Mr. Peter, Mr. Parker, um, and then he sticks to the wall or some shit. And then we get a short little Miles Morales show, um, which is sort of Miles... It's a mild show with Peter in it to be like, here's how you do this. Here's how you handle this. Just being his, like, voice of reason, I guess, for the whole Becoming Spider-Man thing. Um, I'm gonna say it's five episodes. You don't need to do a lot. Um, then Sensational 8 happens. It's the Doc Ock movie. It's the Doc Ock movie with... Oh, my little throat hurts. Uh, my auto Octavius is Paul Giamatti. I think he's a perfect, stupid, little, fucking, goofy, little, smart bastard. I like Paul Giamatti, and I want him to be my auto Octavius. Uh, the movie is, uh, honestly, if you want me to explain it quickly, I can. Uh, PS4 Octavius, basically. Almost exactly. PS4 Octavius. I love PS4 Auto. That. Um... Then we get Spider-Man, The Sinister Six, which is movie nine. And the villain, 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 the villain lineup is uh, Electro, who is Shocker. It's just really amped up Shocker. I have them as the same character. If you don't like that, that's okay. I like the idea of Shocker going from people think he's a joke to a threat to the strongest of the villains. Uh, so, yeah. Electro is Shocker, but really hyped up. Um, Lizard, who is stuck in Lizard form because of Otto Octavius. Otto Octavius. Um, the Vulture, Adrian Thumes, who is the first villain, so I think it's cool for him to stay. Where's my brain? Otto. Electro. Lizard. Vulture. Prowler. 
Prowler. God, my little dumbass brain. Prowler and um, Goblin's back as like a secret villain. Uh, and they all three do a lot of damage. And Peter handles most of it. Miles takes down Prowler by himself and is the only reason Otto gets put away. Um, because Auk has made his arms way more powerful. And the only reason he gets put away is from Miles' little shock. Um, ooh. Ooh. Um, uh, so we get that. And, da, 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 da. and then the finale of that movie is kind of a redo of the scene from the third movie. Goblin is, like, doing his shit on the top of Oscorp Tower. Norman has not been tricking people. He was coerced into this by being driven crazy by Otto and then being given the same stuff. Otto is straight up fucking insane at this point because of the neurological stuff. Um, and it comes down to that. And in this movie, we have... Spider-Man, Spider-Man, and Venom fighting uh, Osborn. Venom shows up close to the end of the, Sin the Sinister Six fight. It's the five. Goblin's not there uh, and helps, but he doesn't take care of too much. He shows up at the very end and takes care of Lizard by just completely knocking that fucker out because he's way too strong. Then those three fight Goblin, and Goblin is dominating all of them. We get a scene where he tears the symbiote away from uh, Eddie, who without it will die because of cancer. Um, and it connects to Peter and beats the fuck out of him, goes back to Eddie. Uh, Eddie and Miles both get put out of commission as Peter and Goblin get into it again, and they end up fighting from the building to Midtown High into the football field. He ends up beating the fuck out of Goblin, and that's it, and Peter retires. Peter retires from Spider-Man and hands off the, the name... Two Miles. Miles then gets his first movie, Kingpin's Wrath, which I wonder which movie that's what who that's about. It's about it's about who? Kingpin. Uh, and we can introduce to Cindy Moon, who is sort of she's gonna start as Miles' sidekick and then go on to be Miles like perfect teammate. Um, and maybe a love interest, I don't know. Um yeah, Kingpin's Wrath happens. It's Kingpin. Also, Prowler gets brought back. Uh, and then killed by Kingpin. No, I don't know who Prowler's gonna be. I, I sort of want it to just be the Prowler from the MCU since they didn't do anything with him. You know, throw my boy Childish Gambino in that shit. And Kingpin's... Who do you want? Uh, we know who Kingpin is. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Also, uh, it's pretty cool. So, like... Wait, wait, wait. Um, the next movie, for, uh, we get a Cindy Moon show. It's not very long. Nothing against her. She's becoming, like, part of the main Spider-Man duo now. So she doesn't need too much. She gets a backstory. It's like five episodes. Um, then we get Ultimate Spider-Man Friend of Foe, which is, which is sort of a chameleon. The main villains in that movie are Chameleon, Beetle, and then a, uh, trying to figure out where's my brain at I miss chameleon beetle and then a secondary prowler like a second generation prowler um who is not related to miles in any way shape or form it's um the son of where's my brain it's john jameson it's jj's kid jesus christ my brain doesn't work sometimes well, yeah, friend or foe is those three. Um, it's cool. It happens. It's the Cindy and, and stuff. It's things. Um, then we get the 12th Spider-Man movie, which is the final one. I, I think it's the final. Um, which is absolute carnage. It's movie 12, baby. Woo! You get Miles, Silk, Venom, and Peter, who has to come out of retirement, versus Carnage. Um... <laughs> It's called Absolute Carnage because I like that more than Maximum Carnage. I think Absolute Carnage sounds more brutal. So I chose that. Um, um, big notes. Peter is fully done after this. Um, so there's that. Um, Miles gets the final 
like get uh, like gets rid of Carnage finally. The symbiote Cletus gets locked up, but the symbiote gets killed by Miles using sort of like all of his power at once. It doesn't get rid of it or anything. It doesn't get rid of his power, but you get it. Um, and Venom has to sacrifice himself to keep uh, Cindy and Peter alive. Um, which for Cindy, it's sort of just Venom's not a bad guy. For Peter, it's a big growth moment because it's like, I wanted to kill that guy and now I am sacrificing my life for him. Um, but Miles gets the, the final goodbye to Mr. Carnage. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my really, really long pitch for 12 Spider-Man movies with three shows. Um, I, when I'm, I, listen, that was really boring, uh, because I'm tired, I am hungry, I haven't drank, and I was reading not script, movie one, movie two, movie three, movie four, all the way down, and all that it says is the name of the film. I had to, like, remember what characters do what, I had to remember what movie was about who, I had to remember the, like, I had to remember all of that, so my apologies. When I make the actual videos about the individual films, I think I will be able to go more in-depth. Um, yeah, that's my long-ass pitch. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts about Spider-Man stuff. It's not like I like Spider-Man enough, and that'd be fucking weird.